I'm so excited to be in the studio. Hey, what does this button do? Jeremy, no! Okay, places everybody. Oh, I'm so nervous. How do I look? Let's just get this over with. All right, guys, come on. Let's make it a good show. All right, all right. Welcome back. Thank you for being here. Hopefully everyone can hear me and see me and all of that stuff. Uh, we're back to, uh, tech and live streaming and, um, Hey Steven, I'm glad you're watching. I'm glad, uh, I, Bill, William, <laughs> my brother, Bill, Jeanette, um, great to have y'all here. I see a lot of people here. Um, yeah, but tech it's, uh, I literally, while the countdown thing was playing, I'm logging out of one thing to try and get it to and logging back in to try and get it to work. And it was a pretty important system. <laughs> so I barely got everything put together for this week. And, uh, as always, I can see your comments come in. So, uh, give me some love as I once again, try to tame this tech beast and deliver a live performance before we start. Today's episode, I'd like to do a quick redo of last week's opening because I was really so proud of it and it got all messed up because one of the slides was missing and stuff. So it's a minute and three seconds, but I want to play it because it's kind of meaningful for me and what uh, entertainers and speakers like me are, are trying to do these days. So give me a moment and we'll put it on. That's important to me because as my colleagues and I um, are adapting to this virtual industry, I keep thinking about what happened to actors 91 years ago when talking pictures were invented and suddenly all these actors had to adapt or go away and a lot of them retired. A lot of them just could not adapt. Darwin said survival of the fittest Actually, what he said was survival of the most adaptable. So that's what a lot of my friends and I are trying to do is adapt because pandemic or no pandemic, uh, the virtual event industry seems to be here to stay. So bear with me as I kind of do this learning curve and this growth experience and uh, learn how to create virtually. And it's a very different feel for me because I'm used to having a, lo a live audience with lots of energy and lots of immediate feedback, etc. So, uh, but this is fun and it's stressful and it's interesting and all that stuff. But to, uh, to start today's episode, I'd like to bring out Mabel to get us started. <laughs> All right.
right, this is Mabel, everyone. Hello there. Yeah, and folks, our episode today may be very controversial and serious. We received a request for advice that, well, it led us down a dark path of investigation to reveal an inconvenient truth we must all face or die. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, I know. I know. This conspiracy has been around for a long time. Some have dared to talk about it. Most have most have not taken it seriously. Some have even joked about it. And it's no laughing matter. I'm just so worried they'll come after us because of what we're about to reveal. Well, we must be brave, Mabel. We must be brave. And the teleprompter must move now. The teleprompter must move. <laughs> How much did you pay? Too much. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, we must face the fact that these beings live and walk among us. They have, for a very long time, they have a plan, and if they succeed, life as we know it will be over. Life itself could be over. Yeah, and since it was a request for advice that led us to this alarming discovery, we will start today with the Advice Corner to kick off today's game-changing documentary. All right, so we have from Leary Leslie. Now, um, Mabel, would you like to read it? Okay, okay. So she wrote, So my cat won't leave me alone. Well, I, I, well, I now, you made the print so small. <laughs> yeah, I'm old, honey. All right, well, I'll, I'll read it. I'll read it for you, and, and I think you're doing that anyway. That's right. Let's start again. Okay. All right. So my cat won't leave me alone while I am now working from home. I have had to scoot a chair over for her so she can sit next to me, but. Now I have this very uncomfortable feeling because she glares at me when I'm not petting her. Any suggestions would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, and let's uh, let's show the picture. Oh, there is a cat in that picture. What have you been looking at? It, it, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> Leslie, you are so right to be so leery. Don't worry, honey. We are here for you. Yes, we are. And in a moment, I'm going to bring out an expert, someone who has been investigating this for us. Give me a moment. I didn't have time to make a character screen for him yet, so we're just going to leave the uh, frame for just a moment. <clears throat> All right, come on. All right, hurry up. Let's get this older with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, man. What are you doing? I'm trying to get this thing to work. What have you been doing all day? Trying to get this thing to work. Oh, my Lord. All right. Just... <laughs> there, there is a little... Uh, there is little known about the origin of cats before the hieroglyphs of ancient Egypt. But we believe they came to the Earth from another planet, which would explain a lot about their behavior. Absolutely. That's true. I'm doing this. All right, all right. Cats dominated the known world in the time of the Egyptian pharaohs. You can see them prominently displayed in the news stories of their day. Egyptians were literally the first civilization to have social media walls. Yeah, it just took a time to uh, to put them in there. All right, so, so show the picture there. Yeah, there. Now, look at this. Never mind, Keith. He's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, where am I? There we go. Hi. Yeah, he did the graphics. Yep, no problem. Note how the cat has the pharaoh in the palm of her hand and the pharaoh's wife on a stick. We're not sure what that means, but we know it's nefarious. The cats clearly controlled humanity. There was nothing to stop them. You don't see dogs anywhere in ancient Egypt. What about the jackals? Well, sure, there are jackals. But jackals are like our cavemen. They weren't evolved enough to take on the cats back then. Even the Egyptian alphabet. Show that. Yeah, even the Egyptian alphabet, there was a lion, but no dog. Not even a jackal. Ooh. Play that thing. 
Is that it? That's not it. All right. Where did that go? We had a button that was really cool. Yes, all right. Anyway, we'll catch it next time. All right. This is live, folks, and we're new at it. Give us a break. <laughs> All right, uh, where were we? I don't know. It's clear that cats came to this planet to enslave us, and they have succeeded. However, now we feel that they have an even more diabolical scheme in mind. We humans had become too strong and plentiful. The cats feel like they are losing ground in their global domination. the button yes <laughs> now bring up that next slide in just a second it has been proven this is serious now you got to pay attention I mean this is big stuff CNN's gonna call any minute yeah I'm sure they will to uh, tell us cease and desist probably it has been proven that cats can carry the novel corona virus we now believe that cats are actually behind the pandemic to bring down the human race. Well, now you're just going to overuse the book. <laughs> we have reason to believe that the nefarious Dr. Meow, Meow Tse Dung, is the mastermind behind this malicious attack on humanity. That's hard to believe. He seems so friendly. I mean, his eyes are very friendly. Yes, they seem very close. Now, let's go back to, to Leslie for a second. You know, now that more people work from home, cats, like, like in, you know, Leary Leslie's case, cats have more access to our economy and our behaviors than ever before. More access to study our weaknesses than ever before. Now, I've got the answer. I do. I just left my notes backstage, so I'll go back and get them. All right, so we'll we'll do that, and um, let's have a big round of applause for Grandpa. He will come back, and uh, let's see how we're doing. Hey, we got lots of good comments going. I love it. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Danita, Carol, all kinds of friends out there. I appreciate it. Um, Raphael, is that how you say your name? It's great to see you here. Thank you. All right, so, by the way, when, uh, there's the button, all right. <clears throat> when asked, President Donald Trump said, nobody ever heard of cats until I made them very famous. I was talking about the cat threat long before this documentary was ever made, and everybody knows it. I am the best cat warning person ever. I warn people about cats better than anyone has ever warned anyone about anything. <sighs> yeah, all right. Now, we have an expert. <clears throat> we have an expert coming on next, and he is from the other side. Now, he would only agree to help us out today and to talk with us if we put him in disguise. So we have put him in disguise, and we will even change his voice. Give me a moment. Let me bring him out. Again, no character slide yet. Give me a break. I'm doing the best I can. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Wait, oh, they're there. All right, now disguise my voice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our nation has... Oh, my God, that's ridiculous. That's... <laughs> You look, I can see you in the monitor. You look ridiculous. Yeah, you're having more fun than the audience. Yeah, I think they're leaving. They're not leaving. All right, Clint even showed up. He's here. Hi, Clint. How you doing? Yeah, all right. Our mission has always been to be man's best friend. Of course, now we say all race and gender inclusive humanoids best friend, but it's more than a friendship. We dogs know that without the human race... We would have to hunt and live outside and eat gross things. We actually kind of enjoy eating gross things, but that's beside the point. Actually, I kind of like snacking out of the litter box, but that's beside the point. We know that we have to keep the human race alive to keep the kibble coming. And the treats. Don't forget the treats. We need lots of treats, yes. 
Lots of treats will help us with our cause. Can we move along now? There was a time just a few decades ago when it was common to talk about dogs chasing cats. We literally had them on the run. But all that has changed. Cats started employing postal workers and other delivery people to distract us. While we were busy chasing those guys, cats started taking a stronger foothold. They learned to sharpen their claws. They focused their aim and scratched our noses. They can jump high and attack us from the air. Sometimes, wait, get me behind the mask, yes, all right. <laughs> Sometimes I lay awake at night, folks. I can hear them purring. It's the purring. They're just so confident about their future jerks. <laughs> we dogs need your help. All right, how can we help? Move the prompter. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. All right. How can we help, Lou? I mean, how can we help Witness X? Thank you. You have to realize that they have you humans hypnotized to serve you. Oh my goodness, you must face the fact that you literally are enslaved by them and you don't even realize it. Oh, I don't think that's true. Oh, really? Yeah. So, uh, do you ever just, uh, do you feed them? Yeah. Do you buy them cat trees and toys to keep them climbing and hunting skills sharp? Yes. Do you clean their bathrooms? Yes. Now, let me ask you this. What? Get me in the mask. All right. <laughs> what happens if you don't trim those claws of theirs? Huh? What happens when you don't dull their serious weapons? Those rapier swords. I tend to bleed. You bleed. You bleed. Yes. I have made my point. All right. You have made your point. Let's give Lou a big... I mean, uh, I, you're not good at this. No, I mean, Secret Witness X. Let's give him a big round of applause. All right. <clears throat> All right. Before we go further, I have to point out, love the background. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, Leslie, my cat rules the house. Hi, Don. I'm so glad you're watching. And uh, um, yeah, either iron the curtains or a working green screen. Yeah, you think I'm going to iron the curtains? No, I'm much more techno technologically sound. So anyway, thank you for noticing. So uh, let's see. Leslie, cats put Tootsie Rolls in the litter box, special just for dogs. Yep, that is absolutely true. Very true. So, um, yeah, we could we could do a whole series on this, really. But anyway, I have another expert that um, wants to weigh in on this whole diabolical and scary issue. Give me a moment. Let me bring him out. <clears throat> Murray. Yeah? Come on. I don't want to. Well, come on, come on, come on. All right, all right. This is Murray, ladies and gentlemen. Murray was a star of many, I would say at least 3,000 elementary school shows motivating kids to read. He was the first character that I started working with as a professional ventriloquist. That's right. And this is his third body. Excuse me? Yeah, you used to be white, and then you used to be more fuzzy, and now we got this. If only you could renew that much. Yeah, well, we're working on it, and I'll tell you about that later. But anyway, what do you have to tell us? We know that cats are seeking to regain world domination. That's right. Why do you think something, something... Okay, here we go. Why is it doing that? I don't know. It's driving me nuts. I know. All right, here we go again. Take two. Take two. We know cats are seeking to regain world domination. Why do you think hyenas and dolphins are laughing at you guys? Well, can you help us out? Well, nah, I don't care. <laughs> but cats hunt birds. Yeah, well, they try to hunt birds, but 
A, we can fly, and two, all we need to do is fly over a mouse or a bunny rabbit or something, and I'll chase them instead. Don't get me wrong, we hate cats. But we hate humans, too. Why do you hate humans? Well, the humans that adopt us, they keep us in cages and feed us bird seed and junk. Trust me, Polly does not want another cracker. Sorry. Other humans make us do stupid tricks in zoos and theme park shows. Do you have any idea how humiliating it is to be an entertainer? I can only imagine. Sorry, buddy. You're on your own. But what about the birds that repeat what we say? They're making fun of you, dude. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, what would happen to birds if the human race just vanished? Well, if the human race vanished... We wouldn't have newly washed cars to fly over. That needs a rim shot. No, not that one. There you go. You gotta learn these things. I'm working on it. It's the second show. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole... That is a lot of buttons. It's a lot of buttons, yeah. Learn them. I'm working on it. All right. So, okay. So you wouldn't have newly washed cars to fly over. No, although I will say you guys do keep the turkey and chicken population in control. Flightless birds, they freak me out. Seriously? Birds that can't fly should just be called food. Well, <laughs> but the human race isn't going to vanish. Don't you get it? Cats need to keep a controllable number of humans to serve their every need. Oh, wait. You already do that. Well, what do you suggest we do? Watch the Planet of the Apes movies, but substitute cats for apes. Seriously, they won't give you any hope, but at least you'll know what to avoid. For example, in the rise of the Planet of the Apes, Caesar becomes... Run it, run it, run it. Why isn't it following my voice? I don't know. Caesar becomes highly intelligent and helps the other primates escape their facility. Now, I give you Quilty. All right, where do we have that button here? Let's see, is that... Uh, let's bring up Quilty. Where is, is that the next scene? I don't know, try it. There I go, yeah, okay. Good, and it covers you, too. Anyway, in Houston, Texas, a shelter cat freed his feline friends over and over and over again. They He got put in solitary confinement and he got out of that. Read the story. It's the truth. That's right out of the USA Today. His name is Quilty. Then, in the movie, Caesar even provides them with the same virus that made him so smart to the other primates to make them smart. Can you say coronavirus? The simian flu in the movies wiped out the human race and gave the primates all the snarts they needed in the movies. Can you say coronavirus? You said that twice. It's worth repeating. <laughs> All right. So there's uh, so there's not much hope for us. Are you looking to see? Yeah. What's the next scene? All right. Yeah. There's not much uh, hope for us. No, nope, they have infiltrated your houses. They have programmed you to wait on them hand and foot. And they keep making adorable and funny videos to keep you from getting your work done. You are doomed. All right. Well, you heard it from Murray here. Let's uh, thank you, Murray, for coming out here. And let's give him a big round of applause. You learned that button? Yes, I did. I learned that button. All right. So let's bring uh, Grandpa. Have you found that? Um, have you found that? Yeah. Okay. Come on out. <clears throat> All right. Folks. This is it. I have found... You gotta change that headline. That's blocking us. Yeah, all right, I'll work. I noticed that, too. It's taking up a lot of room on the screen. Yeah. We still have an audience. Yeah, not much of one. No, there's... <laughs> all right. Uh, Jeanette says, uh, Hey, Murray, I'm sure Keith is more fuzzy now, too. Yeah, actually, quite a bit more fuzzy, but um, that's, that's, that's a whole other topic I just don't want to go into. Yeah, all right. Anyway... Uh, let's go. All right. This is the big news, folks. Pay attention. I have found the secret to feeding the cats once and for all. All you have to do... <laughs> Grandpa.
Grandpa, what? Are you having trouble breathing? I, I got a hairball. A hairball? Uh, it's... Uh, I got a... Uh, oh my gosh. Well... <clears throat> Don't you find it suspicious that just as he was about to reveal to us his secret for ending cat domination once and for all, he gets a hairball. And yes, my brother says, uh, oh, no problem with the applause button. That's right. No problem with the applause button whatsoever. In fact, I even got... This is, people are really appreciating this. That's all right. <laughs> There's also one for when I do one of the jokes that uh, Dad and I used to do. Yeah, so anyway. All right. So, all right. I don't know what Grandpa was going to say. I really don't. But um, Leslie, Leary, Leslie, I do have an idea for you that can help you control your cat. Control your cat. And I... I, I it, Hello. We at Keith and Company regret anything that might have taken place during this episode that could be misconstrued as derogatory toward our feline friends. We sincerely hold cats in the highest extreme. <laughs> the highest esteem. Esteem. Cats are among the Lord's finest creatures. The, the finest creatures. And as human beings... We should love and detect, <laughs> we should love and respect our furry friends and continue to serve them, care for them lovingly as members of our family. Thank you. <clears throat> and now a word from our sponsor. Yes, you can stop purring now. Folks, your body now has a voice. Using our exclusive DNA testing technology, you can learn exactly what your body needs to help you stay healthy. The human body makes miracles by the minute when we provide the right fuel, and once we know what your DNA variants are, we can supply you with the most highly recommended fuels specifically formulated for your body. In fact, we even have a picture. Is that the right? Yeah. And this proves that cats realize that our supplements are a threat. This cat knows that this will make us stronger and they are worried. For more information, you can contact me or go to euphorialiving.com. Folks, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here tonight. And uh, yeah, Leslie says, control your cat. Yeah, well, I'm doing my best. So um, thank you much. Uh, too funny. Thank you, Kathy. You guys are great. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll see you hopefully next week. Have a good